Okay. So, right before we begin, I'm just going to say the topic, and our topic for today is uh, uh, treasure. And the treasure that you, you know, you consider. Uh, how can I say it? Treasure that is either in definitions, something like gold, something like that. But uh, let's go to our Bibles and let's proceed to uh, James. James 5. See to James 5 and we'll read from verse 1 to 8. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh. If, as it were fire, ye have heaped treasure together for the last days, behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts. Ah, sorry. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just and doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it until he received the early latter rain. In verse 8, but ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Okay, so the treasure that I pertain to this time uh, in this particular reading of these verses. The treasure that is uh, pertained to here is the worldly treasures, the physical treasures, you know. And you know, brothers and sisters, as we progress in our in our work in the Lord, you know, uh, even even me personally, it's uh, <clears throat> whenever whenever it comes to to the worldly stuff sometimes you know mostly money uh you get uh you get distracted by it you get uh you get enticed by it and all of these are uh only some of the ways that the devil will lure you into the world back into the world and not and away from the away from god however brothers and sisters be reminded that although uh, we do need money to survive, we do need other things to survive, it doesn't mean that we must overindulge ourselves in them. Overindulge and <clears throat> in, the end of the, in the end of the day, uh, what is pertained here in this verse is not only those who are overindulged, but also those that are uh, that are earn, earning treasure, but really not doing anything, anything of note. Sure, they earn a lot, but uh, they do not. They do not serve the Lord. They do not do His works, and they just keep earning and earning until the last days. Uh, all that treasure will be meaningless to them because they can't really bring. They can't really bring that when they're dead they can't really bring that to their grave although they can physically when they die they die all that treasure just goes to waste and and we can't really bring treasure the physical treasure into heaven all of those that are in the earth stays in the earth and Brothers and sisters, in verse 7 to verse 8, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited, waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it. And so he received the early and latter rain. Be also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draw at nine. So we all know, brothers and sisters, that the, 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 second, the second coming of our Lord is coming soon. Although we do not know when it will come. 
and as stated before you know it, it will come like like that as a thief in the night it will just suddenly happen however brothers and sisters we must establish our hearts in what we must earn as treasures in this uh, in this walk in the Lord. What I pertain to treasure now in what I said is a different treasure, not of the earth. So we go to Luke 12, verse 13. Okay. <clears throat> Luke 12, verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So, with the reading here, you know, it's, a, it's very simple to understand that uh, the Lord is warning us to, uh, to stay away from overindulgence because we were born with only a cloth. We, uh, we were born with nothing but bare. We were born naked and you know we, we do not we do not possess abundance at birth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought with, within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room for, where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods, laid up for many years, dine, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Sorry. So here, uh, here it speaketh of uh, the man laying up treasures, but not in the form of gold, not in the form of silver, but of fruits. And he pulled down his barns. Uh, he pulled down his barns, and you know he built a greater uh, storage so that he would uh, put there all all of his treasures, his goods, his fruits, basically his property. And then to himself, saying that he is satisfied, my soul is satisfied. Now I shall drink and you know be happy in the worldly sense. But in verse 20, but God said unto him, thou fool. Uh, sorry, but God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So you see that layeth up pressure for himself and is not rich toward God. So at the end of the day, this man built everything for himself, lays up treasure for himself. But he hasn't laid up treasure to God. He did not do anything to, uh, to lay up treasure to God. He did not do God's work. All he did was lay up treasure for himself. And therefore, when his soul is needed that night, that very, that very night, you know, and he has nothing to provide because Instead of laying up treasure for the Lord, he laid up treasure for himself, only himself. The worldly things, he laid up treasure for the world. And in the end of the day, he has nothing for the Lord. And let's continue reading. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls, and which of you, taking thought, can add to a stature one cubit? Okay. So let's, in verse 20, 
in verse 23, the, the life is more than meat and the body is more than rain. Uh, when, I, when I read this, it immediately in my mind, I, I perceived that life is not all material things, more than meat, more than, not more than rain. Uh, and the, uh, life is more than meat and raiment. Life is more than the clothes you wear, the properties you have the the money that you own but it is also about your soul your spirit consider the ravens verse 24 for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn and god feedeth them how much more are ye better than the fowls so this is uh I would like to quote a verse from Psalms, but I forgot the chapter, but uh, I believe it goes like, it's better to trust in the Lord than, uh, it's better to trust in God than the, I forgot, uh, the princess, I think. But anyways, uh, this here is the same thing because even the fowls of the, even the fowls that fly over us, the birds that fly over us, uh, they are feeded, they are well taken care of, then how is that any different from us? The Lord, more so that the Lord is, we have, we have a connection to the Lord, we have the spirit, and we are, we are the sons and daughters of the living God. How much more can the Lord, pro can the Lord provide us you know, when we are his sons and daughters, he will not forsake us. He will give us what we need. However, he will not give us something in excess. He will give us what we need and the right amount for us. And which of you with taking thought can add to stature one cubit? If ye then, sorry, if ye then not be able to do that thing which is least, why ye thought? For why, why take ye the thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? So like, like what is said a while ago, the Lord is always there for us. The Lord never gives us uh, anything in excess. Or the, uh, though we might pray, you know, we might pray for something and the Lord gives it. There's always a time and uh, the time that it's the right time for you to get, your, to get what you wished for. However, the Lord does not give in excess. And the Lord will give what, uh, what is only right for us. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. Okay. Uh, two, until 32. Uh, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you to a kingdom. So, we should not we should not worry uh, about uh, we should not worry about some of the some of the problems that we face, and we should pray to the Lord. You know. Although we do understand the trials and tribulations come to our life, that all of these are to build us up and to give us more wisdom. And, and sometimes we tend to think that we want more. We want more, we want more. However, uh, the Lord says to us that do not... Do not think of such, do not think of, do not think this way. And because all of these things, the world already seeks after, you know, uh, other nations too. 
uh, even even when you look uh, right now, you know, uh, other nations, U.S., uh, you, the Europe, U.S., Europe, Russia, China, all the other countries, they all they're all seeking these things, you know, the worldly treasures. And, and although, although we do need these things to live, we also know that the Father knows, Lord knows, God knows, that we need these things to survive. And the Lord, like what is said in, all right, so like what is said in the previous verse, that is this in verse 24 uh, for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn and God feedeth them how much more are ye better than the fowls because the Lord knows that we need these things the Lord provide the Lord provided these provides us these things not in excess but with only the amount that is right for us but rather seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So it is the Lord's pleasure to fulfill his promise to us, brothers and sisters. And, uh, and we must always remember to uh, pile up treasure not in the world, but in the kingdom of heaven. Build up treasure, not the physical treasure, but the spiritual treasure. The, the one, and how do we do that? By utilizing, by using the spirit of the Lord, uh, the, the spirit that the Lord gave us, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And we do that through prayer and through communicating with God through the Spirit. Okay, so we go to Second Timothy, chapter three. And why do I say all these things now? And uh, because it has a lot of significance now, in in this generation. Because uh, truth be told, everything that is you know everything that is uh said in the bible has been happening the signs of the times <clears throat> and th this is more this is very important now than ever to remind the brothers and sisters and also to encourage them to to not be lax to not be too overindulgent and to remind them of the of the coming of the Lord. <laughs> so in verse 1 until verse 17. This all this know also that the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, now as Jans and Jamers withstood, with, withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, man of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Sorry. Ye 
and that will live godly in Christ. Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So we see here the traits of people in the end times, which is very close to what we see in recent times. I mean, in the reading of this, almost all checks in from what we can observe from people of today, you know, just, just walking out just walking outside, uh, walking outside your house, and and hearing people being all of these covetous, boasters, blasphemers, disobedient to Christ, unthankful, unholy, all of these. These are what uh, these are what we see to men now. Lovers of themselves, and. Uh, and uh, in these times, brothers and sisters, we must encourage one another to remind ourselves, to remind the brothers and sisters to, uh, to stay with the Lord stronger because all of these point to the sign that the Lord is coming soon, very, very soon. We don't know when, but uh, it will just happen in the blink of an eye, all suddenly. And, and yeah, it is better for us to lay up treasure in heaven, to lay up treasure in the kingdom of God, rather than to lay up treasure here in the earth, where all of it cannot be transferred to the kingdom of God, but all of it will stay in the earth, and all of it will be meaningless in the end, because, because those of things of the earth will stay in the earth, However, those of spirit will go, will be in spirit. Praise the Lord.